Arachnophobia is a thrillomedy, a thriller with a sense of humor. Rock and roll. In the next half hour, we'll see what went into making this movie. Everything from filming in the remote Venezuelan jungle to controlling our cast of thousands. Plus a look at the films, the people, the myths, and the facts that inspired the movie makers. Rolling. Arachnophobia stars Jeff Daniels, Harley Kosak, John Goodman, and a spider named Big Bob. The film was directed by Amblin producer Frank Marshall, whose longtime relationship with Steven Spielberg led him to direct second unit on some of the decade's biggest films, such as Roger Rabbit, Back to the Future, and the Indiana Jones series, where he managed to work with over half the animal kingdom. I think that uh, one of the reasons that I was selected to do this movie was... Uh... Uh, because of my friends here, I'm very comfortable with uh, dealing with uh, animals and snakes and uh, alligators, rats. I met snakes uh, way back in 1981 on Raiders of the Lost Ark. And then we had bugs in uh, 84 on Temple of Doom. And then we had rats on uh, The Last Crusade. And now it's spiders and arachnophobia. But the best part of first unit directing is getting to work with the human actors. That's been the most enjoyable part. Ready and action! These people, I mean, Amblin with Spielberg and Frank, well, they know what they're doing. If you want to see a spider movie that's that's going to scare you and make you laugh, these people would know how to do, like, the definitive one. So I wanted to be a part of that. It's not every day an actor gets a chance to work with co-stars like this. So I was thrilled when Frank Marshall offered me the part of photographer Jerry Manley, who plays a pivotal role as a member of the scientific expedition that opens the picture. Welcome, <laughs> Dr. Atherton, I presume. Julian Sands is Dr. Atherton, the leader of our fateful journey. Plant your specialty? Insects and spiders and identifying new ones. Great. Oh, just what the world needs. More bugs. You should be careful. You're too big for us to carry out. Before long, Manly has his first scene with Big Bob. Thing with spiders can be pretty intense. They take their work very seriously. Anyway, the story really gets going when Big Bob takes a trip with Manly back to his hometown, Canaima, California. Soon, the displaced arachnid starts giving everybody trouble, especially Canaima's newest family. In particular, the arachnophobic Dr. Jennings. Honey, we're in the living room. We need you to kill a spider. I'm not afraid of bugs like Dad is. Hey, would you, I'm not afraid of all bugs. Just be careful of rusty nails. Dad, chill out. I'm just this doctor who's tired of the city. His wife's a successful stockbroker. So we're going, hey, you know, to hell with the city life. Let's go to the country. Let's set up a nice little general practitioner thing. I've decided to postpone retirement. We moved down here from San Francisco with the understanding that I would inherit all of his patients, but now I have none. Get ready to drop. Doc wants to hear you talk. So I have to uh, now try to grab patients where I can, and every patient I grab dies. Everybody's calling you Dr. Death. Come to find out, it's, it's not natural causes, and it's not my golden touch. It's something else with eight legs, two fangs, and an attitude. There may be some spiders around here that are very dangerous. Just run. Well, I'll call the exterminator. Well, I'm glad you called me. No room for amateurs in this game. The species I discovered live at the top of the food chain. Dover McClintock, infestation management. Always nice to meet a colleague. John Goodman was cast as the exterminator to really provide the comic relief that we needed. What was important was to uh, not make the movie too terrifying, to make it scary but fun, sort of like a roller coaster ride. Oh, You're gonna need another way out of here. Cut. Collecting spiders. Well, one of the things that I felt was very important to the story was to have it totally believable. So I've used real spiders throughout the movie. It's definitely one of the questions they asked was, can you work with spiders, do you think? I said, yeah, I think so. I, you know, I haven't spent a lot of time with spiders. I don't have a problem with spiders, I didn't think. The little guys were fine, landing on my face, things like that. It was the big boys, the guys as big as my hand, the guys that reel her up and hiss. I don't care who you are, you get a nine-inch Amazon spider coming towards you, I mean, yeah, sure, I'm scared, fine, you know. I don't have any problem. No, we, we see each other eye to eye. We understand, well, two eyes to their 16. 
Well, John Goodman may not have a problem with spiders, but a lot of people do, because everyone has phobias. We're all born with certain natural fears. Not surprisingly, the fear of insects and bugs is one of the most common. Uh, other common phobias involve deep water, closed spaces, and high on the list, heights. Phobias have also plagued many movie heroes. Perhaps the most classic example is Jimmy Stewart's fear of heights in Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo. technical name for what Stewart's character suffers from is acrophobia, a fear not easily overcome. Well, this is a cinch. Here, I look up, I look down. I look up, I look down. And in typical Hitchcock fashion, Stewart is forced to confront his phobia head on. Acrophobia can definitely be disorienting, but I can't imagine anything worse than ophidiophobia. Mm -hmm. Fear of snakes. <laughs> Even if you're Indiana Jones. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Very dangerous. You go first. Of course, since every hero eventually confronts his fears, it's only a matter of time for the arachnophobic Dr. Jennings. Very suspenseful. Coming up, we'll hear from the master of suspense himself, visit the rainforest of Venezuela, and take a look at some of Hollywood's past insect flicks. But what if circumstances magnified one of them in size and strength? Then expect something that's fiercer, more cruel and deadly than anything that ever walked the earth. Fighter that did this, you can arrest him. when something's going to happen in arachnophobia. <laughs> That's half the fun. Building suspense in a film is an art in itself, and no one filmmaker contributed more to the techniques of suspense than the master himself, Alfred Hitchcock. Mrs. Bates. To get real suspense, you must let the audience have information. Now, let's take the old-fashioned bomb theory. You and I are sitting talking, we'll say, about baseball. We're talking for five minutes. Suddenly, a bomb goes off, and the audience have a ten-second terrible shock. Now... Let's take the same, same situation. Tell the audience at the beginning that under the table, and show it to them, there's a bomb, and it's going to go off in five minutes. Now we talk baseball. What are the audience doing? They're saying, don't talk about baseball. There's a bomb under there. Get rid of it. Hello. Well, I tried to do sort of the same thing with Big Bob. I put Big Bob in the barn, and then I don't show him again. So when anybody goes into the barn, you know that Big Bob's in there. It's sort of like the ticking time bomb. My, you've been busy. Incredible. Every time somebody's in there, you, wherever the camera goes, you expect to maybe see Big Bob. And sometimes you do. <laughs> Ready. Come and get it. Okay. But one 
one important factor. If you work the audience up to this degree, that bomb must never go off and kill anyone. Otherwise, they will be extremely angry with you. Okay, so the old rules aren't always followed. Today's films differ from the older films in several ways, and the bug movie is no exception. Back in the 50s, gigantic insects were in, and immediately, huge was hot. It's gigantic! Steve there are more. Among the first were the giant ants from the film, Them. A fantastic mutation, probably caused by lingering radiation from the first atomic bomb. The job will be done when these are destroyed. Okay, burn them up. Even stronger and more resistant to man's defense were the gargantuan arachnids of Tarantula. Sergeant, tell them to load up with napalm, rockets, anything they've got. Yeah, look at them! Dropping napalm, follow an order. Over the years, mankind continued to battle insects in films. Oh, bridge. Then in last year's Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, man-bug cooperation was given a try. Onward! Semi-successfully. <laughs> Today, arachnophobia heralds a new era for bug films. The insects are back to normal size, but they're deadlier than ever. Damn! That's a spider bite. Well, this is really not science fiction. It's not the giant spider that ate Cleveland. I wanted it to be science fact. I wanted the spiders to be real, to look real, and I wanted people to believe that this could really happen. Could this really happen? We'll find out next when we meet the spider experts and travel to Big Bob's home in the rainforest. A look at some climactic battles will leave you hoping it only happens in the movies. Today, the average acre is home to 50 to 60,000 spiders. The number of different species of all sizes, shapes, and colors is absolutely amazing. Now, one of the decisions that faced the filmmakers was casting the right spiders. What began was perhaps one of Hollywood's strangest talent searches. You have to cast spiders just like you have to cast people. They're better running spiders, they're better staying spiders, so we had to figure out which spiders were the better spiders. Hot air, hot air. I had about eight or nine things that I wanted the spiders to do throughout the movie. So we put together this Olympics, uh, and we had about seven or eight spiders that competed in several events. And the gold medalist by far was a Delana spider from New Zealand. This is the Delana spider, and it was the winner of the Spider Olympics. It was able to walk across a thin wire, walk up glass, walk sideways, walk upside down. So it was able to do all these things better than other spiders, and it was easy to work with. Action. First time I saw the script, I said, oh boy, how are they gonna do this? I didn't even know, how do you make a spider crawl into a slipper from four feet away? How do you control masses of spiders? You really can't train spiders, but you can take advantage of their behavior. If you put them in a hot place, they'll want to come out of a hot place and go to a place where it's cooler. They've turned out to be terrific, and I hope to use them again. They're great spiders. Tarantula specialist Jewel Sylvester was responsible for controlling arachnophobia's largest spiders. They are naturally an aggressive spider. I mean, they'll, they'll, anything in their way like that, they'll just react and bite you. As you can see, the fangs are right under there in the orange fur, and they're, they're about a quarter of an inch long. The bite is no more than a bee sting, but the fact is that it's such a, a scary looking beast, and they've got such a powerful bite. Um, it would certainly get your attention. We're shooting in the big climax scene, and I see Jewel standing off there with these thick leather gloves, and he says, no, if the spider gets too close, I'll jump in and I'll grab him. I'm going, but he's safe, right? He goes, he's absolutely safe as he waves his leather gloves in front of my face. Just know that even though you're looking over here, I will be on that spider in a minute because they can move very fast. But we got through it, and it's it's a very scary shot, believe me, uh, both on both sides of the camera. Sometimes you don't have to act scared. 
Unfortunately, these monster spiders normally live in tropical rainforest, far from civilization. So far, in fact, that it became quite a challenge when we traveled to the Tapuis, or mountains of Venezuela, to shoot the film's opening sequence. What I really liked about the area that we discovered in Venezuela was that no feature film had ever shot there before. We set up a base camp and a tourist camp that was really uh, built for people to visit for one night, and we were there four weeks. We had to bring all of our own equipment and food and things into this camp, and then we based out of there and we flew by helicopter, five helicopters every day up to the Tapui, where we shot. Parker? A tapui is the local word for plateau. It's also a local word for hallucination, too, uh, among the, the Indians. And it's said that uh, to, go, to go on top of the tapui is to hallucinate. You have to fly like a bird. They rise out of the rainforest almost 10,000 feet. Because the tapuis are so high up, they're right in the cloud range, so the weather is ever-changing. Uh, some days I would just get one take, not one scene, but one take, and then it'd be an hour before the sun came out again. And this one day, we were trapped the whole day. We had actually built the survival camp, and 15 minutes before we were gonna be stuck all night, the clouds sort of opened up. We all dove in the helicopters, left all the equipment, cameras, film, everything there, and got out just in time. So it was kind of exciting. <laughs> Exciting. I'd say that's an understatement. I, I mean, there were boat rides and helicopter rides that I'll never forget. One helicopter ride in particular. You see, uh, every morning we would get in helicopters and fly up to the top of the Tapuis. Now, the Tapuis are thousands of feet tall and thousands of miles from anywhere. And I would always stick my hat, this hat that I wear in the movie, in my pocket so I wouldn't lose it. Well, one day when we got to the top of the Tapui, in the middle of nowhere, I went to get my hat, and it wasn't there. Which meant we couldn't shoot, and that didn't make anybody happy. So I tried to cheer Frank up. I said, Frank, think of it. There, there's a Miami Dolphins hat in the middle of the Venezuelan jungle. I mean, years from now, an expedition will come across it. It's a whole new movie. A man, his hat, sombrero phobia. Yeah, Frank wouldn't buy it. He said, a man, his hat, there's no showdown. You see, Frank, he's, he's very big on showdown. In this type of movie, like Jaws or The Birds, or even King Kong, you have to end with a big confrontation between the main character and their nemesis or phobia. we had to put the uh, the Godfather spider up against Jeff Daniels. So we did that sort of mano a mano battle to the death in the cellar. What really works in this movie is the fact that spiders can go anywhere and be hidden anywhere. You know, in Jaws, if you weren't in the water, you were safe. In arachnophobia, you're not safe anywhere. Because spiders can come out of anything. And they can get into anything. Thanks, Frank. That's a nice closing thought, especially when you think of the 60,000 spiders on every acre. <laughs> well, thanks for watching. And remember, if you think you're getting arachnophobia, well, just keep your eyes peeled for anything with eight legs, two fangs, and an attitude. What the? Ow! The best movies and more are on your 44. Tomorrow night at 8, they killed his partner, but Robert Duvall has their number. Badge 373. Tomorrow night's 8 o'clock movie. Now stay tuned for Arsenio and the Weekend Jam next. Thank <laughs> you.